Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. Today we're going to talk about an actual robot. So I put a picture of this robot on my Facebook page a few days ago and asked people to name the robot. A number of people said it's Wally. -E. It isn't Wally. -E. It's Johnny Number no. 5 from 80s movie Short Circuit. So Short Circuit came out in 1986. It was one of these feel-good family movies like Breakdance 2 Electric Boogaloo or Flight of the Navigator. Um, basically it features uh, some military robots that were supposed to replace humans. And um, one of them gets struck by lightning, as you can see by the cover of the DVD there. And it gets a personality of its own and goes off and basically escapes. And the military go after it and they send the other robots and they send personnel. And then the two scientists who created it kind of sympathise with its personality as well as a girl who works in kind of a fast food van um, and obviously you know the whole film's about kind of the emotions and the relationships and you think the robot's dead but it isn't really and all of that stuff. Um, there's a sequel as well um, which I don't have on DVD but I think it was pretty good and they had some toy ones in the sequel although a toy was never made. I actually got this one from a Facebook group um, where people are modifying these to make them more movie accurate, but more about that in a moment. So here's the Wikipedia page for the first film, and that's the original cover. And that's an actual picture of the robot that was used in the movie. So, um, yeah, I said it came out in 1986. It starred um, Steve Gutenberg, who was um, basically in the Police Academy series, and also a remake of the Poseidon Adventure for TV. Um, there's also a guy in it called Fisher Stevens, who... Um, I'm not sure where he's been in quite a few other things over the years by the looks of it but um, basically he's American and in the film he had to play an Indian Asian character uh, where he uh, I'm pretty sure they darkened his skin up and he had to pretend English wasn't his first language which was bordering on racist to be honest you wouldn't get away with it these days but um, you know they they did the same thing in the sequel as well but that was the 80s so um, also in the film was Ali Sheedy, who, as I said, run this uh, fast food van, who basically, Johnny Five, sort of camped out in her house and all those sorts of things. Um, now, she was in quite a few films. She was in The Breakfast Club and also War Games. She was the kid's girl, uh, Matthew Broderick's girlfriend in, the war, in War Games. She was in The Breakfast Club, along with Molly Ringwald, which is another great American teen movie. Um, also in that movie was a guy called Anthony Michael Hall, who uh, you probably don't recognise now, but he was actually, he played Rusty in, Rusty Griswold in National Lampoon's Vacation. And um, there he is in The Breakfast Club. And he was in another film called Weird Science, which was about uh, two kids who made a girl with a computer. We're not quite sure exactly where she came from, but she appears, they hack into a mainframe and use computing power to make this girl. And then also in that film, was Robert, Jow uh, Robert Downey Jr. who of course plays Iron Man. So there you go. So the toy I've got here has got, um, it's got some movements that it can do, but it's not, not quite as good as it was in the movie. I mean, you can turn its head and things, whoops. And uh, it's also got this, in the, in the first movie, the robots had this laser weapon. In the second movie, he took away his laser weapon and, you know, changed it for a toolbox to prove that he wasn't a cold bloody killer anymore. Um, so you can wheel it along on the tracks and that's about it. There are several other functions of the actual robot in the movie where these tracks tip right up so it can raise up and um, it bends here but it should come back further and this should bend so he can sort of fold down. Um, the, the actual robot in the movie was an incredibly advanced piece of robotics. There was no CGI in those days. So they had to actually build this thing um, and in the movie it whisks eggs and cooks and does all sorts of things and does dancing and all of its facial features move so its eyes can look around and its eyes come out on stalks. All of its eyebrows can move around for different expressions. There's actually a guy in a telemetry suit who, um, you know, it mirrored the motions of him to operate the arms and everything. Then there was someone else driving it and probably another two operators operating the other features such as the head. So it was actually quite groundbreaking at the time, so it could express emotions and you know that was the whole part of the movie was to kind of get into the characters and the relationships and if the robot had been just a trash can on wheels you could never have done that. 
So um, it's inspired heavily by um, a guy called Eric Allard, who's one of these famous special effects guys. He worked on other movies recently as well, like Spider-Man 2 and some other movies. So Mini Johnny 5 is very nice to have, but as you probably know, I quite like my action figures full size. So what if we wanted to build a full size one of these, just like it was in the movie? How would we even go about that? Well, as it happens, there's several other people who'd also like to build a full size Johnny 5. So there's a Facebook group, which is called I Want to Customize My Johnny 5 Toy Robot. I originally started to customize the toy robots, like the one I just showed you. In fact, here's someone who's got theirs in pieces and they've got um, an Arduino board in there. There's lots of people, um, you know, finding alternatives for the tracks, doing eye modifications, various bits and pieces. Um, there's actually someone in this group selling these things. At the, at the point here, there's only 16 left. If you want to get your hands on one, then go along there very quickly. Um, what's this? More tracks. Testing out bits and pieces. These actually look like full-size builds for the uh, lip lights that are in the full-size heads, which light up. It's like a VU meter as Johnny Five speaks. Testing out some LEDs. There's my picture of my own uh, mini Johnny Five. Trying to scratch build more accurate um, tracks, that sort of thing. Um, but in this group, there's actually some quite useful stuff, as well as um, a community which is like 146 members at the moment. So um, if we have a look in the photo section, there's actually a lot of detail. So there's a guy called Terry Andrews who contributed some photos. He actually went to go and visit, visit Eric Allard and look at the original Johnny Five. And um, if we just wait for Facebook to power up the hard drives, um, basically Eric apparently let him take the whole of Johnny Five, the actual one in the movie, all to pieces and photograph all of the details. So there's about five albums in the in this Facebook group of all of Johnny Five, all in pieces. Um, there's just, there's, I think it's 1154 photos, but um, it's every detail of the insides and outside of Johnny Five. And some of the pictures have got a ruler next to them so you can roughly work out the scale. Um, the, there's masses, that's just one album, but there's, you know, What's that? Four or five albums, plus the other members' photos. In the file section, um, there's lots of files about modifying the toys, but if you scroll down, you'll find these step files, which are CAD files, and those are the actual files, uh, mostly for the head assembly for a full-size Johnny 5. So I've already downloaded these, some are STL, some are steps, um, and I've imported them into Autodesk 123D, which is free software, and this is actually the uh, resulting assembly so far. I'm waiting for some more uploads for some more, some more of the parts. But this is the uh, full-size model of, of Johnny Five's head, um, which, you know, ultimately we could export this as an STL and slice it and print it on a 3D printer, which is, in fact, what some people are doing in the group. Obviously, at the time they made the movie originally, there was no 3D printing that was readily available, so all of these parts were handmade. But now 3D printing is definitely a viable option for this. So there are no other CAD files, unfortunately, for the rest of the body. Um, there's only the reference pictures to go on, but that's probably the best start you've got of building a full-size Johnny Five. So I'll put the link to that Facebook group, I want to customise my Johnny Five toy robot. I'll put that link on my website. There's a page on my website specifically for Johnny Five now. And I'll put the link to my website page in the description for this video down below. So apart from looking at the reference pictures in there, how else can we find out about Johnny Five and find out what the dimensions are? Um, well, apparently Johnny Five stood around somewhere. In about 2007, we think that Eric Allard actually sold the original Johnny Five. I found an article on Gizmodo, which is actually on the page on my website, which indicates it was on eBay for sale with a starting price of $100,000. Um, apparently, according to the text of the article, the auction was pulled before it finished. Um, we're not sure whether it was sold, um, but the rumour is that apparently the full-size original, only surviving Johnny Five robot, is somewhere in the UK, possibly in Leicester. So um, if you happen to know where the original Johnny Five is, maybe it's in a museum or it's in a private collection, if you happen to know and you'd like to tell me, um, then let me know, and that would be excellent. Um, in the meantime, check out the I Want to Customise My Johnny Five Toy Robot Facebook page, and also subscribe to my channel for future updates on Johnny Five and other projects.